Well, thanks for tuning in. I'm meteorologist Brandon Lashbrook. And starting off into the tropics, we have potential tropical cyclone 16. This is what we see here just off the east coast of Florida and the Carolinas as well. You can see some of the storm activity in those cloud tops kind of just sitting there across the area. This is the result of a frontal boundary that's been draped across the area for a couple of days now, and that's helping to spur some low pressure development. Now, the air low pressure here is still pretty broad, and you can see there's no real clear center of circulation at all near the surface. So again, this isn't a tropical cyclone yet, which is why it does not have a name yet. And this is why we have the potential tropical cyclone tag, that PTC tag, on the storm. So it's not yet a tropical storm. Now what this tag does allow for is the hurricane center to be able to put a track on this system because we are expecting tropical storm or hurricane conditions within 48 hours for land. And so with this, we are expecting at least tropical storm force conditions. That's why we do have a tropical storm warning in effect. But you see here is the official track for this disturbance, which is likely to possibly become a either tropical or subtropical storm. Next name would be Ophelia on the list, but it is expected to be moving off to the north into portions of the Carolinas, North Carolina, even up to uh, Virginia as well to bring some tropical storm force conditions too as it moves northward, likely bringing some impacts maybe beginning as early as tomorrow into the weekend as well. But current winds for it are 35 miles per hour and it is currently sitting at 340 miles southeast of Charleston, South Carolina. So like I mentioned, this is the latest update, the 7 p.m. Central Time, so 8 p.m. Eastern Time, the update for this system. We do have currently tropical storm uh, warning in effect for portions of the coast of North Carolina down towards South Carolina as well, even up into areas near Rhode Island and Maryland and even Virginia as well. So we are expecting some tropical storm conditions with this. Now, I want to get into a little bit of the science of to why it's being called this potential tropical cyclone. So this low is going to be forming as a non-tropical low or we would like to call a baroclinic system. Now what that, that means, a fancy word, what that really means is that we have differing air masses and so this low is still going to be attached to a frontal system with cold front, warm front, typically what we kind of see during those winter months we get those cold fronts to move through but in case this is just happening over water so you can really see that well in the mid-level temperatures roughly about three to four thousand feet above ground. You can see the temperatures in the mid-levels of the atmosphere are 63 degrees in those yellow colors and then into the lower 50s where the green colors are. So this low is likely getting some of that energy from that temperature gradient, that temperature difference. So all baroclinic means is that we have different air masses and a temperature gradient helping to feed and kind of energize this low. Now tropical cyclones, a pure tropical cyclone, that likes to be a warm core system, so no temperature gradients. So what we're seeing with this system, this PTC-16, is that as it moves northward, it could gain some of those tropical characteristics maybe become a shallow warm core, so not quite fully tropical. That's what we mean by the term subtropical. So if this does become a subtropical storm, all that means is that it's not quite a full-fledged tropical cyclone, but it would still warrant a name. And again, that next name would be Ophelia. So let's look at it onto the future track, showcasing some of these showers and some storms as we go forward with time, roughly to tomorrow morning. You can kind of start to see a little bit of that circulation starting to take shape there just off the coast of the Carolinas as you move forward time again to bring some rainfall, some showers, some storms to the Carolinas. Again, of course, impacts do happen and occur well outside of that cone of uncertainty. As you can see, this potential uh, track for this is our barren model showcasing some rain, shower storms all the way up into the mid-Atlantic states and all the way down to the Carolinas, still where that center circulation may be moving into North Carolina, even into our Saturday. And so as we move forward with time, of course, that's going to be moving more northward, and we could still see some more rainy impacts, some showers, some storm impacts, even to the northeast of the U.S. as the system kind of moves off to the north. So looking at rainfall, or rather future track winds first, we'll be seeing that, again, not much there right now, but as we go forward with time, moving up, you see those yellow colors, that's indicating some possible tropical storm force winds. So this could likely bring some gusty winds, tropical storm force winds across some areas of the eastern U.S., again, the Carolinas up into Virginia, even as it kind of makes landfall somewhere in North Carolina, that kind of vicinity, possibly early by the weekend. So again, with that, we're going to have onshore flow with that wind. And so we have onshore flow pushing water up. So we could possibly see some storm surge as well with this system here, the National Hurricane Center 
peak storm surge uh, impacts for the Carolinas and up into the mid-Atlantic states. Anywhere from about one to three, maybe up to three to five feet of storm surge and some of those coastal and the inland areas as well. So that's one impact again with that heavy rainfall to rainfall estimated rainfall totals over the next five days or so. Seeing again the highest amounts near the coast areas, anywhere from about two to five inches and of course decreasing the more further inland you go as well, maybe up to about one to two inches near Raleigh too. Now, in addition to heavy rainfall, the storm surge, we could potentially see some tornado threat as well for Friday. Here is the tornado outlook for Friday from the Storm Prediction Center, showcasing that two to 5% risk for tornadoes. Again, within, it's the probability of a tornado within 25 miles of a point. So as the storms kind of work their way in near that center of circulation, we could possibly get a quick spin up or two to bring a tornado threat to portions of North Carolina near the coast as well. So that's potential tropical cyclone 16. So if you're interested over into the eastern U.S., make sure to stay up to date with the forecast and also with your local news and as well your local weather forecast office. Now elsewhere in the tropics, still actually have Hurricane Nigel. This is still a category one system, but it is well off to the north, well over into colder waters. So that is going to begin to again still weaken and move off to the north, northeast. No threat to land that, that one will be. But again, that will just be another name checked off on that hurricane names list this year. Now down to the south, just to the west of the coast of Africa, we have a tropical wave moving. Again, seeing some disorganized showers and some storms with a broad area of some lower pressure. But it does have some high odds of developing. It has a 50% chance over the next two days and an 80% chance over the next seven days as it moves into the western or the central Atlantic rather. And as it moves westward, could potentially see some impacts for the lesser Antilles, the greater until it's a Caribbean island again dependent on how fast the system moves westward, how slow it moves, and how quickly it develops. But we could possibly see a tropical depression form at this maybe by the weekend. Now beyond that, still a little too far to tell. So some uncertainty with the track. Some models kind of bring it more toward the Caribbean islands. Some of them bring them out and curves out to sea. So again, we'll see. There's plenty of time to watch this as well as we continue on through hurricane season. But of course, here in Louisiana, where we are in Baton Rouge, the area in southeast Louisiana, and the Gulf of Mexico, there are no tropical threats to worry about, at least for the next seven days or so. But of course, when any changes in the Atlantic or in the Gulf of Mexico, or even the Caribbean for that matter, we will always keep you up to date on air and online at BRProud.com.